Allah says, then after them, khalf came. You, a useless generation, a disappointing generation came. What makes them so disappointing? Listen to this. Allahu salata. They wasted the prayer. Allah is telling me and you, a nation, a generation has been wasted. They are no good. There's nothing coming from them. And what makes them no good? The first crime, the first tragedy of these people, they wasted the prayer. وَلَمْ يَقُلْ تَرَكُوا السَّلَاةِ فَقَدُوا السَّلَاةِ كَانُوا كُسَالَةَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ لَمْ يُصَلُوا لَمْ يَقُلْ هَذَا He did not say they left the prayer. He didn't say they were lazy in the prayer. They didn't say they forgot about the prayer. The language is very precise. He says they wasted the prayer. Now how do you waste something? How do you waste money? You waste money in a number of ways. Or how do you waste an opportunity? You don't take advantage of it. You waste money if you put it somewhere where it doesn't bring you any benefit. You wasted the money. You had something good, you didn't do something good with it. You wasted your time, you could have done something so much better with your time. In other words, there's something there, but you're not using it the right way, that is also wasting it. So Allah is not necessarily talking about people who don't pray. He's not limiting the conversation to people who don't pray. He's talking about people who don't benefit from their prayer. They don't benefit. They wasted it. The prayer is supposed to transform me. It's supposed to transform you. It's supposed to change something in us. You, why is it supposed to change something in us? This is already, this is the remarkable eloquence of the Qur'an. In the previous ayah we learned, people heard the ayat of Ar-Rahman. And when they heard the ayat, what happened to them? What happened? They fell into sajda. Tell me what happens in your salah. You stand and you listen to the ayat of Ar-Rahman. And what are the next phase in salah? What's the next phase in every rak'ah, the final phase? You fall into sajda. In other words, what you physically do, you're supposed to experience emotionally as well. You're supposed to be so overwhelmed by the word of Allah that you just fall and before Allah. It's supposed to actually not only be a mechanical thing, it's supposed to be a natural consequence of experiencing the word of Allah. As a matter of fact, when you recite the ayat, you should want to go into sajda not because you ate too much or because you're tired, but because these ayat are so powerful that you can't even hold yourself up anymore. You can't even, your knees are wobbling because you just, you're overwhelmed by Allah and you just want to fall. When is sajda described in the Qur'an? When magicians see the power of Allah of a stick turning into a snake, regular people, they all think it's magic. The magician's got a snake, Musa's got a snake. But the magicians know their, their industry. So they know that's, that ain't no magic, that's for real. So what do they do? What happens to them? They fall into sajda. When people of the book come and visit the Rasul of Allah sallallahu Jinns travel a lot. They don't need a passport. Right? So they travel across cultures. They travel across galaxies. I mean, they, they travel. You know, there are some, some places where they cannot go, authorized access only, where shihab and rasadan, you know, meteor showers are hit on them, whatever. But they go all over. So they are, you can imagine they're even multilingual. A group of jinn, you know, the jinn were stuck on the earth when the Prophet ﷺ was receiving the Qur'an. Did you know that? Jinn can travel in the sky, but when the Qur'an was coming down, the sky was locked down. They couldn't go. Every time they tried to go to their usual hangout spot next to Mars or something, they got shot down. They're like, where's all the security from? Angel security? Like never before. And they're not allowed to hang out where they normally hang out. So they're all stuck where? On the earth. You know? That's why in Surah Al-Jinn also, أَلَّنُّعْجِزَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ They didn't, they, لَمْ يَذْكُرُوا السَّمَاء They didn't say, we knew that nobody will overpower Allah on the earth. They never mentioned the sky. You know why? Because they can't go up there. They're stuck on the earth. So now they're hanging out in, on the earth. And they're traveling around, just hanging out. And a group of them passes by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reciting Qur'an. They're just passing by him reciting Qur'an. And they all stopped. And they just started listening. Jinns started listening. And because they're multilingual, they're actually even familiar with what they recite from the book of Musa alayhi salam. So they actually, you know what happened? Allah describes the scene وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفْرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا وَنْسِتُوا They're talking to each other, they're passing by. When they came in the presence of the Qur'an, Allah says, they said to each other, Shut up! Listen! Hey, listen to that! وَنْسِتُوا 
فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ When it was done, when it was all done, then they went, ran back to their nations. مُنذِرِينَ Going to warn them. يَا قَوْمَنَا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا كِتَابًا أُنزِلَ مِن بَعْدِ مُوسَى We just heard a book that came down after Musa. They're, they're so amazed, they just heard it right now and they're overwhelmed. Jinns are overwhelmed. This book came to human beings first and foremost. Well, where's our reaction? When Allah says they wasted the prayer, Wallahi, if you think of the, if you think of the ayat about prayer, and the true engagement of the believer with the Qur'an, with the word of Allah, it's actually in the prayer. It's actually in the prayer. Now I'm gonna you know, deviate subjects a little bit. I, this ayah, that's, that was the first crime by the way. Allah salah They wasted the prayer. I'll tell you the second consequence in a second, but we need to build up to that a little bit. This happens when a useless generation comes up who didn't make prayer. My final comment. Why did I share this dark picture with you? This seems a pretty depressing talk. But you know, there's another ayah. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا with the exception of those who repented, who, who revived their faith, and the one who did good deeds, who, who acted righteously. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا They're gonna be entering Jannah. They will not be, they will not be, no wrong will be done to them in the least bit. What does Allah do at the end of this ayah? A useless generation came, but even within them, there will be people who can make tawbah. They can fix things. They can go back to how things are supposed to be. So if we, us and our children, are in the danger of falling into khalf, we can become khalaf. We can become khalaf. We, we have to fix this. We have to understand the urgency of the matter today. Communicate with your children. Be in open conversation with your children. Be cognizant and not afraid, not overwhelmed by the evil outside. Learn to raise the kids so they can stand up to that evil. And do the right thing. The only, the only hope left for humanity is people who stand up for the, for the word of Allah. What did Salah do? Salah, by the way we call it Iqamatul Salah, yes? Iqama means when you stand. And when you stand, you don't lean. The values in society have iwaj. This book is qayyim because it, it, it makes you qayyim. It stands up straight. Its values don't budge. Its values don't move. Now that Allah gave us these values, this Qur'an, look at what happens. They wasted the prayer. They let go of the prayer. When you let go of the prayer, the entire moral world view that comes with the prayer is also gone. When you waste the prayer, that's what that means. So what's the next part? وَاتَّبَعُوا shahawat. They followed desires. <laughs> what have I just summarized to you? What, what, what world are we living in now? The consumer world that we live in now, where the ultimate good is what? Following, obeying your thirst. Just do it. Sound familiar? We're officially becoming a nation of what taba'u shahawat. Follow what the, what the desires, what the shahwa is. Follow desires. And then the final and the worst downfall, فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا Then they will fall into deviation. And ghay literally means a, a curve or a deviation, which means their values will deviate, and they will deviate more, and they will deviate more, and they will deviate more, until finally the ultimate ghay, the ultimate deviation is when they fall into jahannam. That's why the tafsir of this ayah, they say, Amtarat is sama'u nabatan. The sky rained vegetation. The sky does not rain vegetation. The sky rains water, which leads to vegetation. The, he, here it says, they follow deviation. They followed, by the way, al ghay. I know I'm over my time, but that's okay. Inshallah, they'll forgive me. The first meaning of ghay, al dalal wal khayba. Listen to this. The first meaning of ghay is misguidance. So they're misguided, there's no standard for guidance anymore. And second of all, it is disappointment. So they will follow something and it will not give them pleasure. So they'll follow something else and it won't give them pleasure. And they will constantly be disappointed. Suicide rates will go up. People will live miserable lives. Depression will go up. Anxiety will go up. People will have fancy cars, nice clothes. People have all these things, but they will not be happy. They'll be miserable. They'll be on antidepressants or they will take loads and loads of drugs because they don't want to face reality because they're too disappointed. They're in ghay. Then al ghay means al fasad, corruption. Things will get, they're thinking this will make the world a better place. It will become more enjoyable. But the world will become actually only on the surface more enjoyable. The reality of it will be a kind of ugly corruption you can't even imagine. They're gonna sell these clothes in the malls at 200, 300, 2000 percent profit that are gonna be made in factories where people are working like slaves. 
Even animals shouldn't be treated that way. And if somebody decides to do an investigation on them, well and good. But don't do too much of an investigation because you'll lose, lose your job in Fox or CNN. Fasad will come. Corruption will come. Because there's no guidance to keep humanity in check, to keep its greed in check. And the final meaning of ghay is tarqun nahi, as Sha'arawi rahimahullah argued. He said, ghay also means the abandonment of prohibition. In other words, there is no such thing as wrong. There is no such thing. 